Bienvenidos Worldwide fans of cinema back for another installment of the hottest Entertainment with an Edge coverage. I'm Jaime and Fuego and some special guests again. I'm Cecil Laird. And I'm Marsh Parker. For part four of 112263's new series that is being adapted by Hulu, it's not a total binge watch. It's actually yeah. a weekly thing. So weekly reviews from us here for Enfuego Tainment. And guys, in the fourth one, it was all about love, right, Marsha it Parker? It was. It definitely was all about love and relationship building. And, um... Yeah, it was kind of tiring. Exhausting. <laughs> a lot of setting up. Yes, it's exactly. All it is. You know, they're building for a storm and it's brewing. Yeah, and the reason I ask her first is because Marsha has read the Stephen King mm -hmm. book that this has been adapted from. Cecil, my cohort in crime here, him nor I have actually read this, but uh, did it hold your interest, man, or was it just a little more this waning in this one? This is the first episode <laughs> that I was feeling the burn. And I was, I was yeah. feeling the length of time, and there was very little progression in my opinion mm -hmm. out, uh, outside of the love story and it only served to piss me off more but we'll get to that yeah exactly right so we always cover bueno malo and feo some good mm -hmm. some bad and some ugly and this series is essentially about james franco being a school teacher from the present day who finds a portal through a friend of his who owns a cafe sends him back to the early 60s 1960 to be exact but by this fourth mm -hmm. episode we have already skipped up to 1963, his character has been living here in the early 60s, teaching, he's in Dallas, and he is waiting around trying to avert the assassination of JFK. There's so much that's been laid in. Uh, as far as, you know, Bueno goes, concept is still good, and I can believe the love story that mm -hmm. became the crux of this uh, this segment of storytelling. Um, not much else happened beyond that, but I did at least buy into the two divorcees kind of connecting, and that was the mm -hmm. main focus of it. It still worked for me. I felt like when they focused on other stuff it didn't work as well but Marsha what, what worked for you what did you like about this episode I like his reveal with Mimi uh, I think his relationship mm -hmm. with Miss Mimi is is really unique and it's blossoming into kind of a trusted but untrustworthy very obviously now <laughs> um, yeah like they both have secrets and the biggest thing is that everybody wants to make sure that he's not there to to take down Ms. Dunahill because she's already been through so much. Mm -hmm. and yeah, there's a lot going on behind yeah. the scenes with her. And, so. he, and he's and he's pulling it off well, and he I'm beginning to not like this part because he's being very selfish. But mm -hmm. yeah. I think he's being a lot more Franco in this, yeah. for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah, but his character's getting selfish. But other than that, I thought the acting was really well done. It was a little slow, but I would give it to the acting and the relationships. That's what I liked. Was sure. the story beat pretty accurate for you compared to the book, or? I mean, they're rushing things a little bit they're just moving along but yeah it's still right on cue okay cool as far as being right on cue what was right on cue for you man uh, you know the intrigue of the Ms. Mimi stuff is, is good um, the is it Deke I, I almost Deke, forgot yeah, yeah. Uh, the Deke stuff is good. Principal who hired them all. Yep, yep. Um, still, still a friend. But honestly, outside of that, there wasn't much I could point to in this episode that I was deeply fond about. There was actually mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit missing. So yeah, I'll save was. that for the next mm -hmm. segment. Yeah, which is what's so, what's funny about it as we segue here from the Bueno to the Malo is the fact that I, I felt like when they were focusing on the relationship, it worked. But when they tried to actually do stuff that progressed the plot forward, it failed miserably. And that was mm -hmm. probably one of the Malos for me is like the main crux being besides the little relational soirees, which uh, I'll save that for my fail in this episode, because there was a lot of just odd sexualisms in this that felt just like they stuck out. But yeah, I just think the, the plotting on this one, it couldn't figure out what it wanted to be. Unlike the second episode where they did a segue and it worked, mm -hmm. this one for me just didn't. What didn't work about this episode for you, Marsha? Uh, well, the relationship between Bill and Marina, like, they're supposed to be completely anonymous and separate, um, and uh, obviously in the books it's just, you know, Jake going through this and he does a really good job of following this family. He sympathizes with Marina, he becomes part of the family with them unknowing it. But they're kind of pushing Bill to be mixing with it, and I just don't think it works well, for the storyline. Adding a B love story for the B character who didn't exist, right? It's, <laughs> yeah. It's not. I, I, they're supposed oh. to be covert, and it's really kind of... They're, they're falling away from that, and I don't like that. Because the, the most interesting part of the storyline is him trying to uncover all of the things that are going from the time that he enters to the time that JF... Okay, get shot, so. 
So his stakeout and his espionage are a little bit more impressive in the book. Is that what you're implying? Yeah. <laughs> it's more prominent. Yes, there is. He seems story. more bumbling in this, more Francoed. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that we're gonna focus a little bit more on that the next couple. Because I feel like they're getting dragged into the yeah. the love story. And I know stuff. Cecil's got a lot to say. Let Sorry. him have. I, I don't have a lot to say. I just really don't like the Bill character. It's yeah. it seems so shoehorned in, and again, he's just used as as Franco's foil. Like mm -hmm. he's screwing everything up, and it's like it's it's so unnecessary. It's so telegraphed, mm -hmm. and it's so old already at this point. In only episode four. Yeah. To be fair, Franco screwed some stuff up himself in this yeah, one too. Yeah, <laughs> but but. I, I just don't the the bill stuff isn't working for me at all, right. and yeah. it's and it's it's bringing it down. And yeah, so I, I kind of feel like they're trying to figure out these bad, just unengaging storylines for the bill character, just so they can have something for him to do besides just sitting yeah. around and yeah. staking out the place while Franco romances the the hottie librarian. So I I think that that's. The main idea behind him, I have to believe, was their thought. They need somebody to be doing the investigating stuff while we're able to carry on with the love story and try to... They split his character into two different people because they only have a short amount of time. But it's still not the book, working. I don't think he'd be able to do both. In he, the book, if he... I he mean, does maybe he divided well, his yeah. time pretty well, but... But it's just too much, sleep. it's just, you know, it's a really huge book. It's just too yeah. much time. Because they're skipping time, too. Just we from, are up to 63 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're so close. I think they're trying to balance it out, but they should have, I think they should have just omitted the whole bill. I think they could have worked around it a different way. Hmm. Yeah, well, for better or for worse, they're working with it, and that's possibly an ugly. And so we always talk mm -hmm. about the Feo, the ugly, the last bit, something that sticks out like a sore thumb more than the the bad or you know something that really just hit like a bullet right through the chest and was really poignant uh Feo for you man ugly you got something in mind because i do i actually don't uh usually in these reviews i've been pointing out the fact that um my Feos have been good Feos, and that's when the story has gone out of its way to sort of show a mirror to our society saying hey remember this is where we started and mm -hmm. it was a very racist society and we need to continue to move away from it as we did back then because yeah. it's starting to creep back in and this episode is ugly because it didn't have any of that yeah it was the first one to feature zero of those reminders and the right. marsh has got something now what, I would what say did they, do? they they still do show that time frame and when you look at the wife beating yeah she's not black but that was still a very prominent thing where you're allowed to beat up your wife and nobody says anything yeah i was gonna bring that up as my yeah. favorite is there were some old ideas it just wasn't the racial tension it was the whole women are property type mm -hmm. thing and the tension associated with that and the fact that Miss Dunhill's a strange husband. Yep. The divorce isn't final and this is kind of spoilerific and we don't try to, you know, give too many details, but he does show up and that's some of the the real conflict, yeah. you know. It's it, it overshadows the conflict with who they're uh, doing the surveillance on, which is kind of amusing. Mm -hmm. So for, yeah. you know, once again, I'm going to say uh, they maybe didn't handle it so well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It, was, it was kind of ugly. And some of the sexualisms too, I mean, divulging little relationship details and showing, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the, the whorehouses of the day, maybe for some that's a little Theo, the shushed stuff going on behind closed doors that they just lay for all I to see. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. Gave mm -hmm. some authenticity. Yeah. I mean, it was just a little slow. I, I think they're just kind of building up before everything starts hitting the fan and kind of trying to get you to believe in the characters other than Jake and probably Bill, but like Deke and Donna Hill and everybody mm -hmm. like that. They want you to feel for them. They want you to like them because... You know, things are about to change. Yeah, for it's at the halfway point. I mean, mm -hmm. they're about to go over the hill and start that downward progression. Yeah. And I mean, maybe another fail I could mention, another ugly bit is that Cecil, you mentioned during the, the viewing for us, he's like, where's time to push stuff back? It's not really hitting as yeah. hard as. Remember in that first episode where the, the telephone booths were getting run over by cars? There's a lot of pushback. Felt, yeah, it, it felt like that was really prevalent on, at least like early on, and not as much now, but I feel like Ms. Mimi. You know, with her character disappearing at the end. My prediction, at least for this, is that there's an ugly turn for her character's health. That's at least what because I'm speculating she knows, happening because she yeah. knows he is not who he claims to be. Change and something because whenever he changes something, there's a counterbalance. Right. Yeah. So and he could have changed Miss Dunhill from going back to her husband, which caused a counterbalance from mm -hmm. Mimi. Maybe I don't know. 
Yeah. I didn't read yeah. anything. Only time will tell in this. So yeah, there's there's obviously going to be a mixed bag for everything. It's not a perfect series as this mm -hmm. episode uh, evidence for all three yeah. of us. It mm -hmm. was probably the weakest link so far, but mm -hmm. I have faith the concept is still intriguing and it's been a lot of fun thus far. And mm -hmm. Hulu is doing brand new episodes every week, every Monday, and we usually review it right after. So I got to extend a grande gracias to both MPH, Ms. Marshall Parker here, and obviously Cecil Laird as well. He helps me out with lots of Enfuego team and stuff, but the show that all three of us do together mm -hmm. is what he's going to give you the rundown of right now. That's the horror show. It's a horror variety show on YouTube. We do movie reviews, how-tos, comedy sketches, celebrity interviews, con coverage, all kinds of great stuff. So uh, check us out at youtube.com slash the horror show channel or the horror show channel.com. Yeah, it's always spooktacular, always fun, and scary informative, as I always like to say. I'm Jaime Fuego. I like to be informative about everything, as do these two, which is why they're assisting me in the other pursuits as well. You can connect at Jaime Fuego, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, you know, obviously here on YouTube as well. So gracias to the both of them. Gracias to you viewers. We're going to have another installment next week. And let's see if I can get this sign off right this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a work in progress. But uh, until next time, hasta luego, sin amigos. And I hope to see you sooner rather than later. So until then, peace out. Later.